In this video, we're going to use the Mashup API to create a list of dimension values of different fields and then go through how to use navigation with them. The field selections mashup actually doesn't have an application selected for it by default. We're actually going to go through a list of applications and then we're going to open an application and pull out three fields so that we can perform selections. So you can see from my layout, I've got three fields selected and then I have different uh, links that I can connect with. If I look at the HTML, some key differences in the HTML here versus the other two samples we've looked at, up top, nothing's really changed. There's some additional style. And then we're using Handlebars, which is a JavaScript library that allows you to create uh, temp HTML templates in line inside of an HTML file that can then be applied to elements within an application. So here I've got a div, uh, a div uh, template, and then we'll apply that to our fields, and that's what gives us the, the layout that we're looking for. Again, most of the action is here in the JavaScript file, and you'll notice that there are some pretty significant differences in this JavaScript file from the other two that we've looked at. The first one is if we look at the require.config, we've added this paths object, or property rather, that has a handlebars property in it that's pointing to a content delivery network for the Handlebars JavaScript library. So we don't need to download that. We can, and we can add it to our project so that it's all stored together in the source, or we can make a, an, uh, a URL reference. And then inside of our require, you can see I've added a couple of more JavaScript libraries in addition to the click mashup API that I want to use. Underscore.js is a built-in, uh, is a library that comes with ClickSense that allows you to go ahead and uh, uh, underscore has some different functions that you can use uh, that help uh, with some automation of formatting and such. And then handlebars we talked about earlier. And you can see the callback function includes references for underscore as well as handlebars. So if we look at the functions we've added here, the there's the template runner, which uh, takes the template from our HTML file and applies it to the actual div tags that we're going to uh, put our fields in. We have a get all field values function, which is going to loop through the data that we're returning from the ClickSense application to actually create these tables of field values. We have get field def. Get field def actually starts to build out the actual uh, composition of the fields that we want to get from the ClickSense engine when we create a list. And then we have our wire up click handler that goes through and adds all of the click events for setting up our selects and our toggles that you saw earlier. The main function in this application is this click.getglobalconfig.getAppList. In this getAppList function, we're using the global methods of the click mashup API to pull back a list and we're leveraging uh, an if statement to basically go through, or, or, or for loop, to go through each app, find the help desk app, and then provide us with the GUID for that application. We then have a function called get click app, and this get click app just returns and opens the application for us. And this is an important function because of the asynchronous nature of the JavaScript we're working with. We need to make sure that this open app function fires and completes before we move through the rest of our code. Because if we don't, it's possible that our other functions could finish before the open app function finishes and then our code doesn't work properly. So the last function that we, we have is this create list box. And this is where we're really interacting with the uh, ClickSense mashup API. 
you'll see first we're saying, okay, if we don't have the app, let's go ahead and get the click app and that performs our open app function. And then if, uh, as we go through, we build our template runner and our template runner is essentially taking our template code and it's applying it to the div tag that we want to set up. And then we have app.createList. The createList method is from the mashup API. And what we're supplying there is we're supplying a definition for our field, which if we go back up to our get field def, you can see we've got our field definition, which identifies our field and then how much data we want to fetch from that field by default. We're passing in the number of rows for the height uh, as an argument. We could also pass in the width if we had multiple fields that we were actually going to leverage. If we go back down to our create list box, we then go ahead and uh, do our get all field values method. And in our get all field values method, we're using the underscore to, uh, to map through our data that gets returned, the field values that gets returned from our field definition so that we can line them up and uh, apply them appropriately in our HTML. Then we have our click handler function that's going off and setting up our selects, our toggles, as well as our possible and our matching functions. And you can see there we're using the app.field functions with select or toggle select and the others to make the selection against the click sense engine so we can determine the state of a particular selection. Lastly, we're calling the function of create list box, passing the app, passing the field we want and the div tag that we want to have rendered. So if we take a look at this application, you can see that we have our three fields. And then if we look at the priority, field, we have low, high, and medium. And I can go ahead and make a selection and we'll see that my selection changes from O to being selected and then my other fields change to X as excluded because of the selections that I've made. You can also see that based on my selections, other fields like case owner, Sally Pachinski, she's excluded because she has no high cases. I can go ahead and deselect her and that gives deselect high and that gives us our default state again. I can go ahead and choose select possible which will select all of the priority and then that will go ahead and go through the associative indexing if necessary. And then I can use the toggle to basically toggle the state between these items. If I want to use the match, I can go ahead and I'll type in low here and click select match. And that will go ahead and make the selection for me. Now let's take a look at what the data looks like. If we go ahead and open up the console, and let's clear this out and refresh the page. You can see here is the object for the priority table and there's the queue data pages inside of the queue data pages we have our object and then we have our queue matrix it's this queue matrix which holds the different field values and inside of that there's an object that tells you the element number tells you whether it's a number uh, there's a numeric value attached to it what the current state is and what the text is if i go ahead and clear this and i click select on low like so and take a look at my data now and go to that low field you'll see that my Q state has changed from O to S because it's selected and of course my others have changed as well to an excluded state that's really how you can wire up fields and this is a great option if you're looking to integrate the ClickSense visualizations into your own framework, whether that's a portal or a host application where you want to drive interactivity of the ClickSense environment from your host application or your mashup. Thanks for tuning in.